good afternoon students in fact it might be a good morning good afternoon or a good evening to any one of you i have now got into a venture of displaying all the university questions and taking the horse to the water i hope this exercise would be of great help to you people what we are seeing on the screen is a term that we had coined rats in pathology which means racing against time for students in pathology the topic that we shall be taking first will be an aneurysm and in this itself you will be finding a lot of subdivisions are there each and with each one of which is being asked as a university question the definition always some d's are important in pathology the definition the description the diagram the delineation and the comparisons these are all important a permanent irreversible focal distension of the vasculature a permanent irreversible focal distension of the vasculature which might mean artery or vein classification is an aid to orderly thinking and when i say classification it can be an anatomical classification a morphological classification or an etiological classification anatomically it can be based on the artery that is affected it can be aortic or cerebral morphological on the other hand is a shape and size according to which you have got a fusiform aneurysm a sacular aneurysm a berry aneurysm dissecting aneurysm and irregular or varicose aneurysm and another way of classifying also shall be etiological the most important of these shall be atherosclerotic syphilitic congenital mycotic and degenerative or a dissecting aneurysm these are some important things that we should be remembering the types of aneurysms are there on the screen for you people in a simplified diagrammatic form a true aneurysm is one in which the sac like distension is in communication with the lumen the distension communicates with the lumen this is called a true aneurysm on the contrary in a false aneurysm there is no distension of the lumen but there is a collection of blood in the perivascular space producing a distension this is called a false aneurysm the series of diagrams below indicate a true aneurysm here it is a unilateral bulge which is called a sacular aneurysm sacular aneurysm in another one it is more or less spindle shape and we call it a fusiform aneurysm both of these are true aneurysms in the dissecting aneurysm you find that blood creeps into the vessel wall that is a dissecting aneurysm one of the most important types of aneurysm will be an atherosclerotic aneurysm and that to a fusiform aneurysm you people can appreciate the elliptical outline of this it can be in the abdominal aorta or the thoracic aorta it normally measures about 5 to 20 cm in diameter 
and it can sometimes extend into the underlying iliac artery this is a good diagrammatic form for you people to follow a void or an elliptical aneurysm which can be drawn and here you find that it presses on the inferior vena cava posteriorly it can be the abdominal aorta the other blood vessels etc so it causes a pressure effect and erosion of the bones <coughs> the complications these will be mentioned later on also one of the complications shall be a distension within which we can find a thrombus formation any guess what this one is look carefully you are finding some alternate dark and light lines alternate dark and light lines and this is a distended portion of the aorta there is a thrombus that has developed within it and it has got alternate dark and light lines which has been expressed in the slide next you have got areas of rbc and then the paler wb these are called the lines of zahn is a day hn lines of zahn this was a very interesting case in coimbatore medical college wherein the professor of medicine asked his assistants to examine a patient with an yellow shirt without removing the patient shirt and after all examination the shirt was removed and it displayed a pulsatile large bulging lesion in the anterior chest wall and this turned out to be a syphilitic aneurysm a syphilitic aneurysm what is the basic pathology in this one cardiovascular syphilis by itself is a question for you people what are all the manifestations you can get there can be a syphilitic aneurysm sometimes the right ventricle can be enlarged and it becomes similar to the heart of a cattle so it is called as cor bovinum or a cow's heart then there is a tree bark appearance aortic incompetence and obliterative endarteritis these terms you people should be very familiar because they can be asked as mcqs or as individual questions and secondly each one of these should be represented in your answer a picture of the normal aorta over here syphilis all of us know is a venereal disease and it affects the genitalia after which you find that there is a progression of the disease along the aorta there are groups of lymph nodes called the para aortic group of lymph nodes the para aortic group of lymph nodes they drain go up to the arch of the aorta and to the ascending aorta abruptly stop here here is where we have the circle of venous or a girdle of venous so this is where the lymphatic drain in the process there is a damage to the vessel wall and it becomes distended which causes what is called as a facular syphilitic aneurysm and also please remember when there is going to be a distension of this artery there is also a distension or the pulling apart of the aortic valve which leads to an aortic incompetence so what are all the lesions sacular aneurysm aortic incompetence and that can be a cor bovinum look at this picture over here so this is the aorta which can be identified by means of the ostia but the inner surface is not smooth as normal there has been a destruction of the media and what we are seeing is the intima the intima has collapsed 
the collapsing of the intima it leads to a wrinkled bark of a tree appearance bark of a tree is trunk of a tree and that is exactly what we are seeing on the right side a normal tree trunk so this is bark of a tree appearance in syphilis and another condition will be the vessels will be surrounded by lymphocytes and plasma cells we call it as a perivascular cuffing and the lumen becomes obliterated a condition called obliterative endarteritis classical of syphilis obliterative endarteritis another aneurysm that we should have in mind will be the berry aneurysm very frequently asked as a university question it is called a berry aneurysm because it resembles a berry a fruit that is hardly about 1.5 cm in diameter so it resembles that what is the definition and then the site where we can get it is usually the bifurcation of the blood vessel in the circle of willis morphology normally about 1 to 1.5 cm sometimes it can go as large as 5 cm and rupture eventually leading to a subarachnoid or an intracranial hemorrhage such will be the complication look at this picture over here on the right you find the circle of villus circle of villus showing the major blood vessels and the communicating arteries at all this levels of communication you find that there is a congenital absence of the media in some patients that is why it is called as congenital berry aneurysm it is not manifest in children but as the patient grows there is an increase in the blood pressure which leads to dilatation increase in blood pressure leads to dilatation so this is called the berry aneurysm and on the left side you, there has been a wire loop that has been inserted radiologically they identify and fix it and then there is a wire loop which is lodged in this there will be formation of thrombus etc and that will be strengthening this area preventing a rupture this is the modern method of treatment of a berry aneurysm so you people will have to draw this diagram just a y and then a bulge which is a berry aneurysm in this picture earlier there used to be a clipping and then a cutting of the aneurysm but now you find the method that i had suggested earlier is being done there is a wire loop that is lodged and this is being done by the radiology department a catheter and a wire loop and that prevents the rupture of the aneurysm the complications as we had mentioned earlier will be an intracranial hemorrhage into the brain parenchyma or a subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage one clinical differential diagnosis will be hypertension in hypertension also there can be these hemorrhages so that has to be differentiated and the treatment is radiological for a berry aneurysm the fourth type of aneurysm is the dissecting aneurysm robins and other books say that dissecting aneurysm is a misnomer and it is better expressed as a dissecting hematoma however you find that the term dissecting aneurysm is still prevalent we shall be seeing the etiology classification pathogenesis morphology clinical manifestations and treatment as i had mentioned earlier think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer three basic mechanisms in the pathogenesis will be cystic medial necrosis hypertension marfan syndrome these three you shall and will remember and please also be sure that any of this can be asked as an mcq 
This is a beautiful diagrammatic expression of it. There is the iota, the arch of the iota, and the pale red is the normal lumen, whereas the dark red is a portion of dissection, and the blood keeps flowing into it. There is no bulge of the iota as such. And when you cut it across, this is what you people will see. There is a true lumen, and then there is a false lumen. True lumen and a false lumen. Some books describe them as a double-barrel iota. A double-barrel iota. This diagram you shall draw. Stanford and Debeke's classification is very important, and you people should mention it. It can again be asked as questions. Not very difficult. So this is the arch of the iota, and then the descending iota. See, in type B, there is a dissection that is restricted to the descending iota. The arch and the ascending iota are spread. So this is type B. In type A, the arch and the ascending iota may be involved in one. In another, it is restricted to the ascending iota. Is it clear? So compulsorily, you find that the ascending iota is involved. Here, it is restricted to the descending iota. Type A, type B, dissecting aneurysm. So this is a little difficult, but I am finding fine lines over here, black lines. Which are regular, parallelly arranged. These are the elastic fibers normally found in the vessel wall. Normally found in the vessel wall. But this is what happens in the case of cystic medial necrosis or a Marfan syndrome. You find that there is a rupture of it because of the defective collagen and elastic fibers, and so there is a weakness because of this. The blood will flow into this region. Causing a dissection. Again, a series of pictures over here showing the dissecting aneurysm. The complications can be see. One is a dissecting aneurysm. There is a powerful force over there, hypertension, etc. So the blood can rupture to the outside. The patient can die immediately. A second one is if the patient is more lucky. It can rupture into the lumen. Again, the treatment in any way is that it is supposed to be a replacement of the region of aneurysm by a graft. A synthetic graft has to replace the area of aneurysm. Otherwise, the patient will die in a few months. And even with surgery, the prognosis is restricted to one or two years. If care is so poorly, please try to find out the meaning of this. In the meantime, what we have seen in today's class is the definition of aneurysm, the classification of aneurysm, the different types of classifying the aneurysm, and each of these types, which can be asked by a question by itself. The dissecting aneurysm, the berry aneurysm, syphilis, of course. All the manifestations of it, and why it is causing only the aortic incompetence, mark of a tree appearance. All these are questions which you people shall remember. I request you people to kindly send me a feedback or a note of encouragement. Thank you, one and all.